we've got a great show, and, and we're going to begin our show talking about retirement. Uh, my first guest is um, Helen Dunframe. She's an accomplished businesswoman and author, prolific author, four books, uh, and she joins us right now on The Jeff Crilly Show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we're talking about retirement, and I know, and I maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I don't imagine myself being in a rocking chair. I don't imagine myself <laughs> retiring. I'm, you know, the the old, you know, I'm going to work till I'm dead. Uh, I don't know if I'll work till I'm dead, but I'm going to, I, you know, I see myself working into my 70s and 80s for sure. So, uh, Helen, is retirement for everyone? No. One needs to decide whether you want to retire at all, whether you want to do it part-time, and where you want to do it. Because you're going to have at least a quarter or a third of your lifetime left with all these wonderful hours to do something with. And if you sit in your rocking chair, you're probably going to die fast. Wow. We have a cardiologist coming here <laughs> later who will talk about the dangers of sitting in a rocking chair. Uh, but uh, you became kind of an accidental expert on retirement. Uh, you didn't choose it. It was chosen for you. Right. I had a job that I considered was one of the lifetime's jobs. And I had like 77 some bosses because I was working with franchisees and the management of a company. And then the parent company went bankrupt and mm. I was out on the street. And I tried at that time to get a part-time job to supplement my other income. And nobody wanted to hire me, even though I had a broker's license and, you know, had experience in real estate and could go into a real estate firm, even be a receptionist, and offer so much more, they thought I would retire in a year or two. Wow. <laughs> that must have been a shock to your system, and maybe your bank account. <laughs> it was. And so what I did, I had been down in Costa Rica in the 90s, and I loved it. So in 2004, I took a trip to Costa Rica, stayed on in a casita after I did a tour of the Central Valley, and felt like I was rejuvenated when I got finished with the trip. And I told a friend, I'm thinking of retiring in Costa Rica. He says, you're not thinking about it. You just haven't told yourself that you're going to do it. And then people called me courageous because I went all by myself. I downsized. But, you know, downsizing is hard when you get older. I was watching a friend's mother at 90 trying to get rid of her stuff to go into a home because she needed to. Well, so at around 65, it's much more easy because once you start saying, I'm going to sell this, then you look around, what else can I sell? What else can I get rid of? And it becomes a game. And then you just, I shipped what I thought were essentials and I did a good job. Well, and, and you've uh, you have a couple of titles uh, uh, that relate to this: Re Retirement One Hundred and One, Planning Beyond Financial Security, and then a book about Costa Rica. Um, tell us about the the Costa Rica book. Well, it's called Retiring in Costa Rica, or Doctors, Dogs, and Pura Vida. <laughs> and Pura Vida is something they say all the time. I had read somewhere if you say Doctors, Dogs, and Lincoln in your title, people will be interested. Well, I couldn't say Lincoln slept in Costa Rica, so I picked up the Pura Vida. And it was my way of paying forward to people to tell them about the culture, the language, encourage them to speak Spanish, um, to know uh, all sorts of information. The book is full of data and links and references, and I refer to other books and, you know, would you encourage people to retire in another in another country, or is it not for everyone? It's not for everyone. Costa Rica is not for everyone, and living overseas is not over for everyone. I lived in England, and I lived in Germany for a total of five years, so I had experience in other cultures. I have two degrees in anthropology and sociology and a journalism degree, so I'm prepared to do the research and understand other cultures. And I'm extremely happy down there. I've been there over 12 years. Well, now, it's not the third world country that many people remember. Is that right? No, it's an emerging country. And we do have fast foods like Kentucky, Kentucky <laughs> fried, fried chicken, chicken <laughs> and Popeyes and uh, just a number of them. In fact, they're uh, saying that the obesity increase is due to all these fast food is that right? places in there. 
Wow, we're going to have to have our cardi- cardiologist address <laughs> that. Maybe he should jump in on this segment. <laughs> and then, you know, we used to not have good steaks. The cuts of the meat are not anything you recognize. But now you can go to certain restaurants and get a good ribeye. Wow, wow. Okay, so tell us about uh, Retirement 101 uh, Planning Beyond Financial Security. What what was the... uh... Well, back in the 60s, I worked for Con Edison of New York. And part of my job was to interview for the magazine, the employee magazine, the people retiring. They had to retire at 65. It was law. And these people had done nine to five jobs for 30, 40 years for the company. And they didn't want to retire. And almost all of them said, I'm going to play with the grandchildren, watch TV, travel. Now, they never traveled in their life. And two years later, I was writing their obituaries. So that made me think, if you don't plan for the time you have free, which again is a quarter to a third of your life, you can get bored and depressed. That leads to illness and death. Wow. Tell us, you have a couple of other titles. Um, well, let's go ahead and plug those. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Greek Ghost. Tell us about that one. Greek Ghost and Matumka Widow or have the same sleuths in them. They're mysteries. And the Greek Ghost, I, I entwine a lot of Greek words and names and stuff. And so if you know that, you'll understand something about the characters. Matumka Widow is based in part on my son's death. And uh, so I have her married to one man, managed to get him killed. <laughs> wow. We'll go to the second one and get him killed. And then she's on the third one. And I'll leave that for you well, to I read. Think, <laughs> I think you've discovered the secret to, to being blissfully retired is keeping active and writing. Um, do you have other books planned? Yes, I have a third one in that series planned that will take place in London. I'm just beginning to think about it. I have a lot of projects, and I keep very, very busy. It's like I'm working, but I'm working for myself. And it's fortunate I can pay the bills, and I can do whatever I want. Well, and if somebody wants to get a hold of you, or they, they can get your books on Amazon, obviously, by right. by uh, checking out your name, Helen Dunframe. Uh, any website that you'd like to mention? I have HelenDunframe.com. Awesome. <laughs> and when I post on my Facebook page, which is for retiring, Whatever I post automatically goes to the website and to Twitter. Wow. (laughs) Well, you may want to stick around and listen to this next segment because we're going to talk all about KFC eating and (laughs) and sitting on the the porch rocking and what that does to your heart. (laughs) Helen Dunframe, thank you so much for joining us on The Jeff Curley Show. Thank you. Coming up next, how's your heart health? The doctor will see you now next on The Jeff Curley Show. More of The Jeff Crilly Show, coming up. 